good morning students and a warm welcome to the geography lecture of your 8th standard i sir silvester de souza will be continuing with the lesson that i have started in the previous lectures of 8th uh, standard okay so here we are uh, we were uh, on the first lesson that's local time and standard time that is a field of uh, general geography okay and we had begun with page number 1 of yours and then we had continued and we had completed with uh, three pages okay so now we are come to page number 4 as you can see it on your screens uh, now students first of all let me just uh, make you familiar okay with this entire diagram what is this diagram all about so basically first of all you can see over here it's uh, make friends with map okay so this is a map and if you see you can see all the continents of the world in the first lecture i told you that's north america south america then we have got europe we have got africa asia which is our continent where we have got a country india then we have australia and here down below we have got antarctica okay uh, which is not seen because of this uh, time what they have given to you okay so basically students why have they given you the entire world map on the screen okay or in your textbook at present okay the reason is because they want to show you the differences of times okay the differences between various time zones we can call it as okay so here we can see over here let's have a close look at this diagram here we can see the first thing written over here is longitudes okay then we have got the clock hours and then we have got the hours of the day i'll explain each one of you uh, each of that for you okay so first are longitudes i told you the earth is made up of lines at uh, you know we can see these lines over here these lines are not exactly drawn on the earth but they are made in order to help you to understand timing okay and to understand basically locations okay so because of that so these lines what you can see in standing okay going from the north to the south we call it as the longitudes they are long okay and those running from the west to the east okay from the west to the east okay they are called as latitudes so we have got first the longitudes here we have got the 0 degree longitude here we have got those moving towards the east therefore you can find e over here and those coming this side of the zero okay here we can see it's west okay so these are coming towards the western part of the globe and this is coming towards the eastern part of the globe okay then next we have got clock hours now basically what is clock hours okay so clock hours my dear students is the hours that you have on your watch okay uh, in a day we have got 24 hours so you can see this on the entire diagram on top 24 hours and on the clock hours we have got 12 hours as you can see it on your clock and then again the other 12 hours so total it gives you 24 but the clock hours that we are seeing is of basically 12 plus 12 okay so this is clock hours and this is uh, hours of the day now basically what do you have to learn from this okay why is this diagram shown now students this is to show you that how when you complete 24 hours in a day the earth completes one entire rotation okay the earth completes one entire rotation round the sun and in that we have got the day time okay then we have got the noon time then we have got evening and then we have got night so this is an everyday process that the earth undertakes okay and based on this we can see the various timings what are there over here okay so whenever the sun is at 0 degree it means that it's at noon at that particular longitude okay i'll explain that to you all as we go ahead now let's start with the geographical explanation longitudes lying to the east of any longitude are ahead of the time at that longitude while those lying to the west are behind let me just show it to you over here so whenever you see longitudes towards the east they are always ahead of time you can see this okay which is at 1 degree uh, sorry which is at 15 degree east the timing is 1 o'clock if you go still ahead at 30 it's 2 o'clock if you go ahead at 45 it's 3 o'clock whereas if you come over here it goes behind you at you it is 12 o'clock in the west if you go 15 it's 11 o'clock still if you go over here farther it's 10 o'clock still if you go more further on it's 9 o'clock okay so we can see that there is a differences of time okay there is a differences of time what is there okay so as you go towards the east you are going ahead and as you are coming towards the west you are going behind okay east is the side you are going ahead and west is the side you are coming behind okay simple to understand very good as the distance between two longitudes increases their local time also starts differing now you can see there as the longitudes the difference is going on increasing we can also see a difference or a change in the time over here so as you are changing your longitude so also is your time changing okay now 
once again to show you over here as you move towards the east you are going ahead of time as you move towards the west you are going behind time okay i showed you on the diagram also okay now if you multiply the differences between longitude in degrees by four minutes okay at any distance of the low uh, the longitude increases their local times also start differing so that is in case to understand if you multiply the differences between the longitudes in degrees by four minutes then the differences in the respective local times can be calculated so it's simple mathematics that is if you try to divide it okay we can understand that we can come to know about the local times of each and every place okay just let me just show it to you now students for example if you try to divide from year to year okay when you try to divide it you will understand that there is a simple okay there is a simple thing what you can see over there we can understand just by looking okay if you understand this very clearly okay if you understand this very clearly students you can understand it that it's very very simple very very simple to understand the timings okay of uh, various places okay it's very easy to understand the timings of various places if only if only you have understood how and when to find out okay the differences between the various longitudes so if you can see it on your screens okay you can see that as you are moving okay as you are moving ahead there is also a change okay there is also a change in the timing now students i told you the difference is by 4 minutes now how you come to know about that now here you know from year 0 to 15 it's 15 okay and the difference from year 12 to 1 is about 60 minutes so when you divide 60 by 15 you get 4 okay when you divide 60 by 15 you get for you can try that in your book and you can see it okay therefore it is told to you over here that whenever you are trying to move ahead okay if you multiply the differences between the longitude you can try doing that 60 divided by 50 you get 4 okay so we can come to know about the time okay in the respective zones okay the differences in the longitudes can be known with the help of a globe or the map so you can come to know about the differences in time with the help of a globe or a map so this is your globe and this is your map if you understand this very nicely you can come to know about the location of any place on the globe and not only the location you will also come to know about their respective times if you know and understand how to divide it and find it out okay now let's take an example of our country india both mumbai and kolkata are of our country india both are coming in different longitudes both are coming in different longitude now if you try to see and understand you will understand that the differences between them is almost by one hour okay i'll read a geographical explanation become easier for you to understand both mumbai and kolkata are located within india but on different longitudes their local time differ by an hour so we can see that the differences between mumbai and kolkata okay it differs by an hour okay there is a difference between both of them by an hour okay if there are different local times within the country because of longitudinal differences there would be lack of synchronization in the routine activities of the country if each one follows their local time discrepancies emerges in carrying out daily business in the country therefore generally the local time at the longitude which generally passes to the middle of the country is deemed to be as the standard time of that country the standard time is used all over the country now i'll tell you in short what is written just now i told you the difference between both okay both are coming at different longitudes and if you see the timing my dear students this is coming to the east okay so here it's noon before mumbai in kolkata the noon is before mumbai now imagine if kolkata would have followed its own timing and mumbai would have followed its own timing it would cause a lot of problem okay it would cause a lot of problem because what would happen is people would not understand which timing to follow if your relative is coming from kolkata to mumbai you would say uh, what time are you reaching mumbai okay so he would say three o'clock then again you would get confused okay three o'clock according to his timing that is kolkata timing or three o'clock according to mumbai time so there is a lot of problems over here okay so therefore a country always tries to you know follow only one timing only only tries to follow only one local time okay because if there would be plenty of local time you can see here there could be discrepancies okay meaning what there could be a lot of problem there could be lack of synchronization that means you could not understand which timing should we follow okay how to do the things all the daily activities say for example trading and all those things okay a lot of problems okay with respect to business at global level there should be compact uh, there should be 
compatibility between the standard times of various countries. To facilitate this, the world has been divided into 24 zones. These time zones have been created with a reference to the prime meridian. So I showed you the zero degree. So the zero degree, my dear students, is called as the prime meridian. Okay, the zero degree longitude, what you can see, it's called as prime meridian. Now just now I told you about the country, Mumbai and Kolkata. So they're having only one timing. Now what about countries if they want to have trade? Say for example, India and America. How would, what kind of timing would they follow? So for them, my dear students, they have prepared, okay, standard times, okay, that is they have divided into 24 hours time zones so as to have, you know, better trade without any problem, okay. Normally, if the differences between the longitudinal extent of the country is less than one or two hours, only one time is used. So I told you basically if the difference in India also, it's only by one or two, uh, you know, longitudinal extent. So therefore, there is not a much a problem for our country. But usually what happens if there are more than two to three hours differences, then one standard time zone is not enough. Okay, so, so those countries can, uh, you know, uh, consider more than one standard time zone. Okay, so India, it is less than one or two hours the difference. Okay, so therefore, we follow only one standard time zone. But certain times what happens that lines you saw, okay, I'll show it to you. See, India has got only two lines. So therefore, it's only one hour at the most or a bit more than one hour. But that's not a big problem. Okay, but if there would be three or four lines passing in our country, India, then it would be a real problem for our country, India. Okay, then maybe we would have two time zones. Okay. Today we have got only one that is called as IST but if there was differences then maybe we would have more than one okay so here yeah, this is the prime meridian this is what is the starting point okay or from where that zero degree uh, longitude passes and from here we can you know divide into 12 hours this side and 12 hours this side that is equal to 24 hours time zone for the entire world at large okay now let's study about IST Indian standard time so what's the Indian standard time Indian standard time has been decided according to 82 degree 30 minutes each longitude which passes through Mirzapur near Allahabad in Uttar Pradesh. This longitude passes to the middle of the country with reference to its longitudinal extent. The local time at this longitude has been selected as a standard time for the whole country. When the sun is directly overhead in this longitude, it is assumed to be 12 everywhere in India. Okay, so basically what happens if you see this most point, okay, the westernmost point and the easternmost point of our country, okay, and if you divide it exactly in the middle, we get a place that's called as Mirzapur. Okay, let me just show it to you. This is the place Mirzapur, which is coming in Allahabad in Uttar Pradesh. You can see this over here. So when it's noon over here, when the sun is exactly over this point, okay, we can say that it's noon all over the country. Okay, because this line is how the distance between east to west is about 3000. So exactly in the middle, we have got 1500. So when you catch that, it passes through Mirzapur, okay, a place called as Mirzapur which is coming in Uttar Pradesh, okay, so that place is basically, you know, taken to be as the standard time of our country, okay, so whenever it's noon over here, this time is considered to be as the standard time at 82 degree and 30 minutes each longitude, okay, now what's the universal standard time, what do you mean by universal standard time, okay, for an international coordination between countries, the local time at Greenwich, that is Greenwich mean time in England, is considered to be an international standard time. The differences in the standard time of various countries is calculated with reference to the GMT. The IST, that's the Indian standard time, is ahead by 5 hours 30 minutes of the GMT. If it is 5 p.m. at Greenwich, then it would be about 10.30 p.m. So if you had 5 to uh, five and a half hours, that's 5 hours 30 minutes, you get 10.30 p.m., okay? So basically students, now as I told you, as in India, we have selected Mirzapur, okay, which is in Allahabad, Uttar Pradesh as the standard time. So what would be the standard time that the world would follow? Okay, we require a standard time for the world to follow. How would you compare? Say, for example, if you want to compare Indian time, okay, they want to show you that there is a match in India, okay, at this time. So how would they compare that timing for you? So for that, they have to compare the timing with this particular place okay which is in england okay at greenwich which is coming in england i'll just show it to you on the map so this is the place okay uh, it's at greenwich i'll show it to you see here this is greenwich you can see this red color mark you can search it on your google also and this is coming basically in england okay england is a country okay so it's coming over there and that is considered to be as the uh, standard time for the entire world okay so it's ahead of uh, uh, indian standard time is ahead of uh, gmt okay which is coming in england okay so it's ahead of that it's by 30 uh, it's by 5 hours and 30 minutes okay so this is your uh, if it's 5 o'clock 5 p.m then you can see this it's 10 30 p.m in india okay why because it's 5 hours 30 minutes so if you catch 5 to 6 1 hour 7 2 hours 8 3 hours 
नाइन फोर आवर्स टेन फाइव आवर्स सो फाइव आवर्स एंड थर्टी मिनट्स सो दैट्स टेन थर्टी ओके सिंपल टू अंडरस्टैंड ओके सो वी हैव ऑलमोस्ट डन विद द लेसन द लेसन इज कम्प्लीटेड बट आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू गिव यू सम एक्स्ट्रा इन्फॉर्मेशन वेरी गुड टू अंडरस्टैंड वेरी गुड टू यू नो लर्न समथिंग गुड फ्रॉम द लेसन समथिंग एक्स्ट्रा सो दैट यू कैन इट कैन बी यूजफुल फॉर यू इन द टाइम अहेड ओके so there is a national institute of standard uh, of standards and technology this is situated at uh, usa that's the united states of america and they have developed the most accurate clock okay they have got the most accurate clock in the world it is said that you know it, it has to be adjusted only by one second one second when not every year once in 20 million years you can imagine how accurate it is it has to be adjusted just by one second in 20 million years okay 1 million is about a thousand thousand years okay thousand thousand years are about 1 million so you can imagine how much is 20 million in india also we have got uh, the npl that's called as the national physical laboratory of india it's at new delhi they also you know have got an accurate time keeping because it's very necessary when you're talking about space resources and so on okay it plays a very very important role you can see over here whenever you want to launch a space craft or all these things you know it's very important accurate timing okay so this is accurate up to 1 lakh part of a second Now imagine uh, one second okay you can imagine one second just i'm telling you one second it's completed so it's accurate to 1 lakh part if i try to divide the uh, second one second if i try to divide so it's so accurate okay it's so accurate so you can imagine how you know technology today has reached okay so the most accurate clocks okay so this is the thing that is there in the united states of america okay that's the national institute of standards and technology and this is the one that is there in india that's the national physics laboratory okay so it's very useful for launching of satellites and so on okay very very helpful and the one more information for you is about jantar mantar it's an ast astronomical observatory this was supposed to be you know showing the correct timing okay it was the olden days that's maharaja uh, jaiswai uh jaiswal uh, uh, jay singh okay the second he was the one who had uh, you know developed this at uh, jantar mantar okay it's at uh, rajasthan jaipur the capital of rajasthan it's situated over there and there are plenty of observatories one is at ujjain one is at varanasi jaipur delhi and mathura so all these are the various ones which are there okay so this was help you to it was it used to help to show timing to those people at that time okay when they did not have clocks and mobiles like us okay so today it's completely okay today it's uh, today they are used today these observatories are used as a cultural heritage so today they are used as a cultural heritage okay students so basically i have done with the entire lesson i have given you some extra information so as you know it would be helpful for you all to understand uh, now today i'll be just sending you the notes my dear students uh, soon we will be having a practice test also for the same lesson i have taken the same lesson for your uh, practice test also so please start studying and uh, Uh, start writing down the notes also now students when i'm sending you the notes you will write only those notes which are ticked okay which i have ticked with the red pen okay write down only those notes which i have ticked with the red pen i'm giving you some extra notes also not big answers but objectives okay so i'm giving you some extra notes also only write down those notes which are ticked with a red pen okay clear if you have any doubt you can contact me on my number okay so students stay home stay safe Take care of yourself and your families. God bless you all students.